Interface here on Covenant Radio. On Interface, what we do is to have heart-to-heart conversations so that at the end of the day, we all become better individuals. Um, I don't know what you're waiting for. All you have to do is to follow us on all socials to become part of our family. On Instagram and Facebook is The Covenant Radio. On Twitter is My Covenant Radio. On YouTube, just type Covenant Radio on the search bar. Subscribe, like our videos, and remember to hit the notification icon so that you'll be the first to know whenever we go live or whenever we upload a new video. This is the station that brings life on the airwaves. My name is Uche, and we are going to be right back. The move a muscle. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Interface and you are here on Covenant Radio. Join the conversation on Facebook and Instagram at The Covenant Radio and on Twitter, My Covenant Radio. Um, Sending your observations as well. Comments, we'll be expecting your comments and what you feel, your opinions as well. All right, um, let's talk about our guest. Our guest is a man of, (laughs) the man of many hearts. He wears a lot of hearts. Um, he's a co-founder of Ed Turf Global and Ed McFort and the ED rather, the executive director of McFort. Um, he's a seasoned management consultant. He's a social and serial entrepreneur. He's a trainer and a learning facilitator. He's a digital advocacy campaigner and he has an exceptional pedigree in team bonding sessions, retreats and strategy sessions for both organizations within and outside Nigeria. And let me also add that he is a sports enthusiast. He's a man of many things, trust me. He has a robust CV. Joining us today to discuss the episode that we have called The Evolving Man Beyond Stereotypes. Let's make welcome, Benga Olorofemi. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you very much Good for the introduction, you. Uche. You are welcome. Always, fine. always, always welcome. And um, I couldn't have actually pointed to anyone to bring over for a discussion about about the men. And sometimes I feel that um, men do not deserve, um, or rather, they don't get the attention that much, okay? It's almost like it's a, we say it's a man's world, all right? But then there's a clause that adds it and say the, the women rule. So let's talk, let's talk a bit about um, the definition of masculinity in today's society and how it has evolved over the years. Masculinity, another word for that would be fatherhood. Mm-hmm. But in today's world, it's actually defined in terms of um, social roles, attributes, attitude and expectations that are associated with men. That's what, that's how we define masculinity. But you have to look at the values that come with being a father. Right. You nourish. You have strength. You 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 have dominance. Yes. So and you're self-reliant. That's and that has not really really changed traditionally, historically, biologically. That's right. That's right. That has not really really changed. So it's important for people to know that it, um, even though we say it's evolving, but it's. Uh, it's um, it's it's a little constant and static. The difference is that um, there's a stereotype that men should men shouldn't be vulnerable, men shouldn't show emotions, they don't cry, and, right. mm-hmm. uh, and so when you don't do that, the, the society thinks there's a problem. But to the degree in which you're vulnerable is also important. To the degree to which you're supposed to cry is important. You mm-hmm. must also know where to draw the the, the lines. Try to draw the line. That's right, right. So it's been it's been constant. Had not much has changed. Not it's much traditional, changed. and in terms of masculinity, yes, not much. Has, not 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 much not, has changed. Much has changed. See, we live in a world now where if you say no, you had seem to be toxic or aggressive. But that's part of the making of a man. That's right. But you need to instill discipline. You need to be dominant. You need to be self reliant. You need to show strength. Mm-hmm. And at some time, they might require you saying no. That's right. You, you, just, you used the word a few seconds ago, which is toxic. And just that's the right um, segue for my next question, which is um, a buzzword 
that has been around, actually the concept has been around for a bit and it's toxic masculinity, right? Um, can we talk about toxic masculinity? <laughs> it's, a, it's a subject that interests me because the truth about it is that I personally do not believe there's anything called toxic, toxic masculinity. Right. Human beings are toxic. Human beings can be toxic. Whatever is toxic is um, poisonous. Masculinity itself is not toxic, but some people can. So, but to now put it together, it's just a buzzword. I don't think there's anything like that. We should try to run away from stereotype. Um, I think we'll be, we're in a generation that um, wokeness has, is the one that has come up with things like this. Mm. And um, you hear people say things like, um, my father never gave me a hug. My father never said, I love you to me. But that same dad sold a house for you to school in England, paying school fees in thousands of pounds. Right. What greater love can be more than that? Right. So I think it's a case of chicken or the egg. The egg. Which one comes first? So who is defining it? It's love only defined when it's expressed the way you want it. What about the person expressing it? Can you give without loving? Can you love without giving? Yes, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. You can't love without giving. Right? And love comes with sacrifices. Sacrifices are not necessarily pleasant. So the man that sold the house, and you say he hasn't told you I love you, would you rather have him say, I love you, and then you go to a public school or a state school where you suffer as a strike for like five or eight years? All right. And then they hug. So you should be able to actually put things in proper perspective, which is why I don't agree with the word toxic, toxic. masculinity. But again, I can understand where they are coming from sometimes. Yeah, when you hear people say things like, boys don't cry. Mm. When you hear people... Uh, blame victims of rape, say, why, why, why did she wear what she wore? Or why did she go there? Um, people say no. Women say no, even when they mean yes. No is not a complete statement, when no is supposed to be a complete statement. From both sides, male or female. So I understand when that happens. But people must also understand that we all behave or relate based on the level of um, exposure, education, enlightenment that we have. So the same person in that space right now, in another three, five years, might be in a better space where they realize that that thinking is wrong. So I'd rather say that we should do a lot of uh, sensitization, educate people, boys, mentor boys to be better men than to just look for a sweeping word to generalize. And then a lot of times, when people talk about alpha male, I think that's a problem. People are not able to differentiate between an alpha male right. and a toxic man. So you do not have to be toxic to be an alpha male. Alpha male. It depends on your job designate. Even if you are a CEO and you need a cleaner to do something for you in the office. So saying things like, um, could you please help? Could you kindly do? Does not reduce you. Right. So what we should actually address is the fact that people should be more cautious in the way they talk, the way they address people, do not dehumanize anybody, do not, do not sound derogatory and um, treat people right. And I, I'll give an example from football. Jose Mourinho, successful coach. Pep Guardiola, successful coach. Mm -hmm. Alex Ferguson, successful coach. And uh, Johan Klopp, successful coach. But if I would... I, I won't use the word toxic for about three of them. I could use for one of them, which I'll leave, I'll leave you to guess. <laughs> but if I was to talk about uh, maybe Pep or Fergie, I would rather use the word assertive. Mm. So I leave it at that. Right. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so N N Nigerian men face um, quite a number of societal pressure all right, regarding career, career choices and um, financial success. How can we redefine, you know, success for men and encourage diverse paths, all right, that align with um, individual passions and their talents? Um, that's a tough one. It's a tough one because even when you talk about school, 
school will always want to do a baseline exam. Yes. So everybody just writes exam. If you pass, you are said to be smart, intelligent, and then school will say things like, they give an award when people are graduating. The child that is most likely going to be the most successful in life. Unfortunately, it hardly turns out like that yep. because that's not what life answers to. Mm-hmm. If you go to the animal kingdom and say, let them, everybody come to a 100-meter dash, the cheetah comes first. And then you look at the whale, dolphin, and the fish is like, they don't know what they are doing. But let them go do the, the dash in uh, underwater. underwater and you <laughs> see what happens. So my point is that even the school system, in my opinion, should be curriculum and school system should be redefined into like four different categories. Right. That people I call the economic students. Economic student has to sell to earn a living, eat, feed maybe their grandparents that they live with or even their parents. Most economic students lost their parents so they're living with their grandparents, aged grandparents that cannot, they're not, they, they've passed their prime. Mm. So they don't actually have a lot of strength to generate funds. But so a lot of times when governments say, oh, out of school kids want to give them scholarship or we won't feed them in school, that does not take care of the economic child because he still needs to go to the market to sell, to sell. so that his other siblings or his grandma might eat. Can eat. So giving him scholarship does not solve the problem. Feeding him does not solve the problem. In fact, if you feed him in school, he probably will take the food home so he can share with his other siblings. So, and so there must be a school system that allows that that kind of child goes in the morning and then sells in the afternoon or goes to sell in the morning and goes to school, school in the afternoon. In the afternoon. Right. The, the another category is the ones that are just very creative. They've not been taught anything, but they can build. So they shouldn't go to regular school. Another set is they want to go to school. They can pass. They enjoy the fun fair that comes with school, but they're not really interested in school. So they might end up studying engineering, medicine, or whatsoever, and become showbiz people later in life because that's what actually interests them. Then there are the scholastic ones. Mm. They want to become doctors. and So there must be space for all of this. I say this because if you really look at it, the pressure for a man, they make it look like you have to be very, very successful. You have to take care of family. You have to take to everything. And you know, you define it from family, career, and finance. So nobody talks about your well-being. Nobody talks about your your health. Nobody talks about how you are physically. And then nobody even talks about how you are functionally, spirituality. And you must be able to generate. So there has to be personal pursuit. Yes. So you can be a CEO and still love to be a DJ. Personal sport pursuits. So you, you that's what I you like. I love that analogy. <laughs> yes, that's what that's what you like. Yes. So and that you should be allowed that. You should be also be given a breather. Mm. But not that so 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 for me. There's a lot of pressure on men, but men by themselves must be able to prioritize and define it. And how do you do that? Look for support structure. Look for support structure, mm. a group of mm. people that you can do well. Because you know, men are usually, they usually tilt towards things as against people. And when you, that's why you find more men in engineering. And when you tilt towards things, it can lead you into isolation. Isolation Isolation can lead to depression or mental health issues. So it's important to always realize that you need people who are created to be around people. Mm. So don't isolate yourself. Stay in the game. Find support structure. And for a lot of us, support structure is family. So you are from a large family and closely knitted, that support structure. For some people, it's church. For some people, it's work. So the family are to work, which is why you cannot retire them. Even when you retire them, they find a reason to still come to work. They want to be a consultant. Mm. They even beg you, let me just come, give me an office to just read newspaper. I cannot stay at home. This is my life. This is all I have known. So that, that you just find support structure. In fact, that's why some people join courts. Right. Right. That's where they find love and support structure. Right. That's the simple to that. You might not be able to understand it. That's why even church for some people is not just spirituality. There's a lot of socials to it. That's why you go to if you if you grew up in the Orthodox Church like we did, you see that they have buses. Those buses are for nothing but to attend people's children's funeral. I mean, uh, wedding ceremonies, attend the members' funeral, the members and grandfathers' funeral, mothers' funeral, etc. etc. It's just Socials, right? It's just socials, and even when you enter church, you you know there's a lot of solemnness and all of that. You know they pride themselves in all of that. Those things. <laughs> I saw. I just saw 
the educational part of you, you know, in answering that question and speaking about um, uh, being able to be a CEO and a DJ. So, so correct. I used to work in a particular company and there was a director, particular director, who whenever he had a gig in his house, it was a DJ. Whenever he invited you exactly. over to the director and back at work, he was the he was, he was the director. Um, uh, what are some of the challenges? I mean, there's a challenge we have when it comes to expressing our emotions. Why, why is it so? Why is it difficult for a man to express himself? And um, um, is it our makeup? And the funniest thing is, you know, when push comes to shove, the woman will say, you know, he doesn't communicate with me. He doesn't talk. You don't. I mean, why, why do we have such a great challenge when it comes to expressing ourselves as men? Fingers. Okay, so I see you're coming from the relationship point of view now. That's right. But that, the, the, even outside of the relationship point of view, that, there's a burden of the safe space. So as a man, you express yourself, or as a boy, you express yourself, and it's used against you. Even, you, you, even a lot of times, mothers or parents will say to their kids, okay, so what do you like about us, our style? Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, talk about it and then you talk about it and then next morning morning devotion that's that's the topic of subject. discourse that's the subject <laughs> of discourse so a lot of times that's why and usually when things happen to women they verbalize they communicate when things happen to men they make decisions I would never put myself in this position again right this will never happen to me again right. that's the difference so a lot of times men don't communicate as much because of um, cultural reasons and um, physiological reasons. Reason. When I say physiological reasons, men, the way men are wired to speak is in a linear form for information, pass information, or to retrieve data. That's not the way it is for women. So let me give you a simple example. I don't have what to wear. If it's a lady saying that, what she's saying is I don't have something new. If it's a guy saying that, what he's saying is that nothing is clean. Clean. Can you see the difference? But the same thing. <laughs> so a guy wants to hang out with his friend and he goes, Oh boy, how far? You do around. You do watch the game. Can we meet at 38? Cool. Later. That's all. We're done. But they're done. But the lady starts with, Oh, so my hair is not done. I don't even know what to do with the hair. Okay, maybe I should do this. Like, what do I even wear? Nothing is even. I don't have anything. Uh, do, should I come with this? I, who else is coming? Why this place? Why not that place? Why? They can be on the phone for the next one uh, just to make up. And then at the end of the day, still cancel. So you have, you're almost... <laughs> but they are good. They're just... Sometimes they're just talking, venting because they don't need solutions. They just want to talk. They just, talk. Yeah. Yes. And just listening just, here. Yeah, right. listening, yeah. Listening here. That's not the way for... It's not like that for me. Uh, but, but more importantly, safe space. So men must deliberately look for a safe space where you can talk and then you can actually get vulnerable when necessary. The underlying word for me is when necessary. You can't always be vulnerable. You have to be in charge of your emotions. That's right. That's right. Safe emotions space. are like flu. And it's important that people understand that. Maximum flu. <laughs> three days. They will come, you're, you're emotions done. will come and go. You can't live on that. You can't dwell on that. That's it. So that's the beginning of your man. That's that's right. That's right, guys. This is interface. Uh, my name is Uche, and we have been. I have been Lauren Femi here with me, and we've been talking about the evolving man beyond stereotypes. We're going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's Interface. I have Binga Laura Fermi here with me, and we are discussing the evolving man beyond stereotypes. So, Binga, there are quite a number of men that feel pressure to conform to traditional gender rules, right? Um, there's got to be a way. <laughs> when we were having a chat before, before this, uh, before this properly started, you, I had mentioned that there are some guys who are more in touch with their feminine side all right there's got to be a way how we can redefine these expectations and promote a more you know inclusive definition 
of masculinity. I'm not talking of the extreme, the guys on the extreme end of the rainbow, right? So uh, how can we how can we do this redefinition of um, um, men masculinity to be more inclusive so that some men who really do not want to pursue the um, the roles, the traditional gender roles of men can also be accepted. For okay, so I don't think this is very difficult because right. we, we we must be um, we must be conscious of the fact that that some of the things we call the traditional gender roles that is a function of a um, cultural construct. There was a time that women didn't go to school. There was mm-hmm. a time that women didn't go to work. So it was just okay and fine to say that to cook. Or to do house chores is just a, a a lady's or the 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 woman's role. Yeah, role. But really, it's not a gender role. So now we're in a generation where it depends on who is working when you are working. If you live in the Western world where they work twenty four hours and you you're, you're doing night, by the time you get back in the morning and the woman is not around, you you're on your own. You if you really know, you have to eat for. Sustainers of a survivor. Such a survival. Sense means that you sort yourself out. So when it comes to issues like cooking, swimming, and driving, they are survivor skills. Everybody should learn it. They are not gender rules. Again, everything in life comes in. It's like a staircase. There are always be people around you. Yes. You know, life is like uh, tennis. You only score points on your own. You only score points on your own service. And then it's like a, it's like a run of a ladder. There will always be people ahead of you, and there will always be people below you. Below. So our our strength, our values, our dominance, our quest for pursuits and goals, the degree would vary from individual to individual. Mm-hmm. So some people would just be okay with the basic. Some people would not. But it's fine to own your thought and your personality. Society must now allow people to flourish in whatever they say they want to do. Right. The issues arise when a guy says, I want to be a nurse. And they say, no, you're a guy. You can do better. Study medicine. Become a doctor. And then he's struggling. I want to be a primary school teacher. And they say, no, you're a guy. You can do better. Why don't you turn to a lecturer? So you have to do PhD, mm. etc. Mm. I, I, I love to cook. I like to be a chef. I'm like, no, you're a guy now. Can you be a chef? So, so, so we need to move away from those kind of stereotypes. If, right. if we're able to accept that and move away from those kind of stereotypes and that there will be some people that will just be effeminate. They will resonate more with their feminine side. Right. So men like that will probably like to work as chefs. Chefs. And mm. they might even like to work in a crash. Mm. They might not mind to work in hospitals. Mm. They might not like, mind to work with people. There's nothing wrong. It's just who they are. But the people, you have to look at the flip side. The people saying that you can do better are not saying you can do better because they hate you. They're saying you can do better because they know you're going to marry, have kids. So you have a, a, a high level of bill ahead of you. Why? That's why they are saying that. So they, it's just out of love too, so that they can give you a better earning power. So you must understand where they are coming they're from. They're coming from. You must understand where they are coming from. Right. But we must be able to generally accept ourselves and also understand mm-hmm. that... The same thing that makes you a man in terms of assertiveness, in terms of dominance, must what must be tempered down so that at every point in time you don't get into a brawl because you want to talk, you assert yourself or you want to lead. Everything must not lead to because the same thing, the same drive could always make you start a fight. Sure. It's not necessary to always start a fight. Sure, sure. Sure. Uh Sure. But you must be. You must accept who you are and be able to say no. And when you say no, no, it's a complete sentence. Meaning that after this, you probably will not like what will come. In fact, you most likely will not like what will come. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, um, A number of men neglect their mental health, their mental well-being and uh, the suicide rates are higher with men 
right? Whether in Nigeria or outside Nigeria, much higher in men. What can we do to begin to address this and to be able to take care and sustain our mental health as, as guys? To the degree in which men show aggression is actually higher than that of women. That's one of the reasons why it looks like suicide rate is higher with men because men play with firearms and stuff like that. They do more dangerous work. Mm. Missions or bricklayers, whichever, whatever you call it, 99% of them are men. If you look at, if you ever see anybody on an electric pole, it has to be a guy. So electrocution, well, you work with, and so, and then when you are not self-aware and the only way you can define yourself or define success is how much money you are able to make. When you lose money or you lose a deal or you lose your job, you lose your identity mm. and it can actually propel suicide. When Word. people define you only from that. So it's important to also educate men and make men realize that, okay, your name, your job designate, your body shape, or your degree is not what actually defines you. What defines you is what you can do outside of all of those four things. That's right. I know a, a story of a, a man that rose in a denomination, church denomination, became regional pastor, area pastor. And at some point, he told his general overseer that I like to be a youth pastor. That's my calling. That's what I've always enjoyed. It's mm -hmm. just that you people have promoted me and promoted me and promoted me. But I, I, I did like to go back to that. Mm -hmm. And the GO said, oh, that's what we're even looking at now because we need to get the young people back in church. Right. And they moved him to become a youth pastor. Okay. But you know when you go for their monthly or annual conference, the area pastor, the regional pastor, where they sit, their car park, different from youth pastor. So, of, of course, the wife didn't find it funny. So we can't sit in front again. We can't sit here. We don't have car park. We don't have this. We don't have that. But it, so so it, so it affected their marriage a, a, a big deal. Oh. But so oh. a lot of times you must be able to define yourself outside of this. And for some people, church is the only support structure they have. Yes. So for people, work is the only support structure they have. Yeah. So the way they change them. That job designate it used to be empty. That's why you cannot, even in the office, they promote some people from assistant director to director. Two weeks after, if you write a letter and you put assistant director, you are going to receive a query. But that's not what defines you. That's not who you are. When you came, you were not assistant director. And you leave, you won't be assistant director. Right. So there should be more to you than that job then, designate. So the real mm, issue mm. is we must be able to find ourselves some identity outside. And if you listen to politicians, you understand it can actually be very depressing. So I I, I had a classmate mm -hmm. whose father at some point was a minister in this country mm -hmm. and then late now. And then at some point he was also a governor. So the man was saying it at some point that when he was minister, his birthday, once he opens the paper everywhere, when he was governor, same thing. And that is exactly a year after now. Nobody's even calling him. Mm -hmm. It was landline. Mm. So, 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 so that's part of the problem. But you must rise beyond that. And you must understand that that's not what defines you. So, and then you, the people that matter to you, maybe your wife, your kids, your cousin, your parents, your friends, once those ones call you, you should be fine. The support structure is key. Yeah. When it comes to our Mental health. Mental when, health. So your support structure is key when it comes to your mental health. And then and, and then don't don't over bottle up. I think men bottle up a lot. Mm -hmm. So make yourself a little vulnerable when needed, to the degree that it is necessary. But you cannot talk to everybody. You, you can't continue to whine. Sure. You're sure. not a child. You can continue to complain. You can play victim. All of those are not positive traits. But you don't in the bit to be resilient. Men over uh, bottle up, mm. so, but the most people you can actually talk to, speak with. Yes, mm. people, people that have gone ahead of you. Look for mentors, look for coaches. Just talk to someone. Okay, and, and in the same breath, let's talk about um, why our physical health is important to us as men. We've spoken about mental. How can we start taking care of? our physical health as men and how can we start taking it seriously? 
So the kind of job we do in this generation allows for you to be very sedentary. So you sit a lot, you're inside right. AC. And right. So that is tendency, and then there's tendency for you to now um, eat a lot of junk too. So you have a lot of junks in the trunk. So, and then sometimes that's what we associate with uh, uh, arrival in the side of the world that, oh, he has made money. Can you see you now have a pot belly? <laughs> but that's not, a, that's not a good sign physically. <laughs> so it's important for people to be conscious of that. Exercise, exercise, get involved in things that make you walk around, jump, exercise, right. watch your diet, eat healthily, stay away from substance, abuse of drugs and drugs and a lot of alcohol and all of that. Stay away from it. Exercise. Then, above all, get more than enough sleep. A lot of times, men pride themselves in the fact that they sleep two hours, three hours, four hours <laughs> daily. You know, there's nothing wrong in sleeping <laughs> properly, having a good sleep. Because God that put it there is a way to help you reset your system. Yes. So, yes. it's important to also sleep well, yes. eat well, get, get involved in exercise. And... Um, but physical health is important because health is wealth. Yeah. The, the job is uh, temporary. It's not a constant. Someone will stay before you. Someone will come after you. So you, if you really value your family, your wife and kids, you should, and even if you value yourself, that aspiration, you can achieve yes. it if you are not well. Yeah. You can achieve it from the hospital. So you need to take care of yourself. So physical well-being is as important as mental well-being. Mental. We have to be very conscious of that. Eat well, sleep, get enough sleep, and eat eat well as well. Exercise. Yeah, exercise rather, exercise. All right. Um, so, okay. So this this is a little this is a this is a mouthful. All right, but 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 it's. It's just trying to point out being able as a man, being able to navigate, you know, pressure. All right. Or rather, considering online, you know, in the in the in the kind of age that we are right now, considering the social media, the pressure from social media, and embracing our true authentic selves as um, as men. How can we how can we because not everything on social media is real, mm -hmm. right? So how can we be true to ourselves as men, all right? As, oppo as opposed to what we are seeing of other men on social media. It's not necessarily that what they are projecting on social media is not them to us also, if you understand what I mean. So how can we, how can we do that? How can we start doing that in order to... Again, I'll start with self-awareness. Your manliness or masculinity cannot be defined by social media optics. Right. So your, your, that cannot be defined by likes, followers, or comments. Mm. If that is defined by that, then there's a problem already. So, and then you, 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 you have to, as a man, you have to learn to take social media breaks because a lot of things on social media are not real. Right. So you cannot build your base on that. Your worth and esteem cannot be built on that. On that. Mm. You have to own your body. Well, however you look, you're short or fat, like they say, you don't have six packs. That's who you, that's your body. And, but that doesn't define you. You are more than that. But you have to own it. You have to own your thoughts. You have to respect other people's opinion, but own your thoughts. That you respect other people's opinion is just a sign of civility. Opinions are either right or wrong. I know we have a generation now where people say opinions are not wrong. It's your opinion. So it's valid. It's not valid. Opinions are, can be wrong. But just respect people's opinion. That's it. That's right. And then also know that not everything on social media is real. So if you are, if you know that you know peace, if you know that, that not everything on social media is real, if you know that you know peace and then you don't put yourself under unnecessary pressure. Pressure. Yes. Right. But right. take social media breaks. Don't, don't be too dependent on it. I, I, I like to give a simple example. Okay. When we're much younger, Sundays, people will come over to the house to greet. Your parents will cook, you buy minerals, soda, um, 
and then but you don't see them in this generation again that's the effect of social media technology so people can call and once you call at best FaceTime or video call mm -hmm. you are good you don't need to visit anybody that's again right. but that reduces bonding when we we're growing up when you, you are dating someone when you leave that person or even if you are married if you leave your wife in the morning to go to work and your wife leaves or your wife leaves you to go to work you don't see yourself until you come back home in the evening if you leave if either party travels you don't you probably don't hear from each other until you are back the following day or two days after mm -hmm. so you genuinely miss yourselves that's the truth but today you, it doesn't happen like that you do not genuinely miss yourself we just say all of those things. That's why someone is chatting with you and says something. It's not even funny, but you just put LOL. You just put the emoji. You are not laughing. You are not. So, so it's, those are part of the problem. You have to understand that it's not real. It's just for the optics. So don't, you cannot live in that. You cannot live in that space. That mm. Yes. If you're dating a girl and you go to the university, if the last day you saw yourself before you go into school, you guys fought. If you are going to write her, she doesn't get a letter until a week or two weeks after That's the right. post office. That's right. By the time she's reading the letter, the anger level would have subsided. Mm -hmm. And so she's more happy to read from you than to be angry with you. Mm -hmm. But now, before you even drive home, you have a load, you understand, a message load on WhatsApp, blah, blah, blah. by the time you read it and you need to respond to that, you will do your relationship more harm than good. So my point is, if you really want anything to work, you have to take social media breaks. If you want to miss someone, you know, you must be able to go out with your friends or family without touching your phone. Sure. Have sure. meaningful conversation. Sure. Don't isolate yourself. Stay around people. Stay around people. And then be, be, be available. Sure. Sure. I love sure. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. Um, um, so on a on a parting note, on an ending, on a note for us to end, what's your word of advice? I mean, the truth is we can take this conversation on and on and just expand it. But part of the things that we do on interfaces, they're like conversation starters for us. It can it can go two, three hours, but we're just we just scratch the surface and give people um things to just munch on. So on a parting note, what's your what's your word to guys who want to constantly keep evolving all right and still at the same time stay true to themselves we need more role models and good men in the society and it's important for us to also know that in the race for quality there are no finish line so you need to constantly learn the day you stop learning is the day you die so constantly you must open yourself to learning learning new things and learning mm. how to become a better person. But that's not supposed to mean that you lose yourself on your identity or you're, you lose your self-worth or self-esteem. Right. A lot of times when people come on social media to talk, you might look appear like the victim. People might like your story, but you might lose yourself. You know, there's a Yoruba saying that says, Will do work with it's okay to look at a madman but you don't want to have that as a child. That's right. People must understand that. Mm -hmm. So, but my parting note for, for men is that be vulnerable when necessary. Connect with humans. Don't isolate yourself because mm -hmm. it can lead to depression. Right. Be real. Be present. Be available to the people that matter to you. Understand that it is within your right to say no. There is freedom of speech which people are okay with. So everybody feels they should be able to say anything to anyone, especially on social media. But when you block them, it's a problem. So, but there's no, people don't accept that there should be freedom of, freedom to block. But what I say to people is that there's freedom of speech, but there's restriction of speech. What do I mean by that? If you land Heathrow today, there's freedom of speech. Can you just shout in? I'm killing everybody here. I'm killing everybody here. Mm, what do you think will happen to you? That's right. Police. But there's freedom of speech now. <laughs> you can't just land Heathrow and start shouting that I'm killing everybody. I'm killing everybody. I'm going to detonate a bomb now. 
the police will pick you up. So there's freedom of speech, but you need to be accountable. Right. You need to be you, you need to be honorary with the way you talk. You understand? You right. need your the way you talk you reflect the number of your days. So it's not just to just talk or so but we so we need people that are more rounded in all of these things. We need people that are more rounded in all of these things. So that's my parting. That's my parting note. Be vulnerable when necessary. Do not isolate yourself. Connect with people that matter. Connect with people that matter. And then make yourself available. Be real. Make an impact. Mentor people. Talk to young people. Mm. Make yourself accessible. Right. Heavy. Assertive, dominant, and firm. Those are the making of a man. Right. Heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. Wow, guys. Um... um Wayne Galore Femi is someone I have very deep respect for. And um, this has been an awesome conversation having him on the show. Wenga, thank you so much for coming around. We appreciate it. You know, you know how much I appreciate it, right? <laughs> it's a privilege and an honor. <laughs> thank you so much for inviting thank, me. Thank you so much. Heavy, heavy nuggets here on Interface um, on Covenant Radio. We've been I've been speaking with Wenga Lauren Femi and we have been tackling. Um, the evolving man beyond stereotypes. Um, remember to follow us on all socials. Um, Instagram and Facebook is The Covenant Radio. At My Covenant Radio is Twitter. If you want to send us an email, it's radio at thecovenantnation.org. Remember that we have a YouTube channel as well. It's Covenant Radio. Just type Covenant Radio on the search field. Like our videos, subscribe and hit notification bell so that you will know whenever we go live. This has been Interface. God willing, we're going to be here again next week. This is the station that brings life on the airwaves. Take care. Bye.